I'm a former golf course superintendent and agronomist, North Carolina State University graduate. I've even worked with Arnold Palmer on a golf course construction project. And I'm going to tell you the most important thing you can do for your yard, and that is take a soil test. In this video, I'm going to talk about where to get it done, how to submit it, how to read the results when you get it back, and what's really the most important things that you need to be testing for in your soils. Why is this so important? I'm going to show you a chart here. Thinner the line, the least plant available that nutrient is in your soil. You could be putting out fertilizers on your soil, and it would be in a chemical state that it is not plant available. If your pH is not within the 6 to 8 range, there's nutrients in your soil that either are currently there or you can be putting on. You can be going out and putting out fertilizers and they are not getting into the plant. Those nutrients are simply in a chemical state that does not make them plant available. Plant cannot take them up. That's why you've got to get the proper pH so they can get into a state where the plant can absorb them. It also can affect your pesticide and beneficial microbes in your soil that actually help you not have to use so many pesticides on your yard. I'm going to talk a little bit about some of these private companies. And I have seen a lot of these soil test results online. I'm not saying anybody is trying to pull the wool over your eyes, solid wrong or incorrect, but this is why I recommend going to Land Grant College. I have seen a lot of soil test results with nitrogen on. Nitrogen, you have to understand, can volatilize, meaning it can go into the atmosphere. It leaches very quickly. It can also run off. In addition, if your grass is doing very well, you're getting ample rain, it's between 75 and 85 degrees, your grass, particularly bluegrass for cool season grass guys, Bermuda grass for warm season grass guys, it's open bar. <laughs> it is absorbing a lot of nitrogen. By the time you take that test, and you maybe take a day or two to put in the post office, as we all do, we're busy folks, then you send it to the lab, then they do their analysis, and then you get it back, it is several days later. And you, the nitrogen changes in your soil so much that really nitrogen tests do not do anything for your yard. You need to base your nitrogen applications on the turf type. Now, I'll give you just real brief here as to how much nitrogen per year each grass will need. And you'll need to do that throughout your growing season. Centipedes the least, Bermuda grass is the most, bluegrass is the highest for cool season grasses. And your nitrogen applications based on the turf species and the line of latitude you're growing season. You really don't need to do it off soil tests. Thing is, is this. I have an Amazon storefront. You can buy soil tests on Amazon. I could say, go to Amazon and buy this soil test. And on Amazon, when you see a lot of these YouTubers put Amazon links on it. I do too. We, I, full disclosure, like, it does not cost you any more money, but we get 5% if you buy something. Amazon does that. One of the main reasons why they do this is they try to get people who know what they're doing, talking about the product and giving you some guidance. And in that way, it gives us an incentive. And hopefully folks are doing things or telling you, hey, use this. Hopefully they're doing it in your best interest and not because they're going to make 5%. I'm not putting any soil tests on my Amazon storefront. If you want to check it out, you can. I've got fertilizers, herbicides, pesticides, tools, sprayers, all nine yards. Don't go to Amazon or any other private lab to do your soil test for your yard. Simply do your land grant colleges. The reason being what you need, really need at the end of the day. If somebody gives you, you need all this more, they're probably either trying to be too sophisticated and or trying to sell you something. Here's really what you need. You need obviously pH. We talked about that. You need potassium. It will not move in soils. Okay. Potassium gives you winter hardiness, mostly warm season grass folk. It gives you summer hardiness for cool season grass folk, and it gives you good rooting. Phosphorus, the middle number. You have three numbers on a bag. You have nitrogen, phosphorus, and potassium. Phosphorus is a middle number. That one, if you see on flowering plants, is usually very high because that is for flowering. When we're talking about turf grass, essentially seed head. Phosphorus is also for seedling bigger. That's why on starter fertilizers, you see that middle number typically a little higher. So that leaves potassium and pH are the main things that we're looking at on soil tests. There is a number of things that I'm going to show you in filling out the paperwork. And most of that has to do with agriculture and soil studies and things of that nature. It's very simple to fill out these forms. And some of these forms, you just simply skip over. I'll go through at least the one here for WDU. And I can tell you, filling out others for across the country, they're all about the same. So what do you need to get a soil test? Well, first of all, you will need a soil sample form from that particular lab. You will need a stainless steel or a plastic pan. It cannot be galvanized, but it, this is a fancy full probe that I have had since college. I'll be using it, but you can also use just a simple hand trowel to collect your sample. Need to be stainless steel. Some of the plastic can work there too. Also going to be a little gadgetry today. This is actually, if you look at like a soil tester and it does pH, how much water is in your soil. It does sunlight. Work real quick. I'll just, there's a sensor that goes all the way down here 
and at the end of the probe, those wires attach to this probe. And then there's another wire that's attached to here. See how it's separated right there? And what it does, it, it measures the electric conductivity between these two. One of the things that people do to their home lawns, I've seen people sample just the front and the side and the back, and, and yeah, that's very thorough. But when you take a soil test, the one thing you need to consider is, is how am I going to manage my yard? Am I really going to put a certain amount of nutrients or lime or sulfur, depending on what you need, in the front yard and a different in the backyard and a different in the side yards? Probably not. So I recommend just going ahead, and this is what the pan is for, go ahead and taking a representative soil sample of multiple places in your yard. I'm going to show you something on this soil sample. pH is 7. Now let's stick it in the ground. Now the pH, pH here is not horrible. It's down to 6.0. Now let's move it just a few feet. It's 5.2. You really need a representative sample. Let's take the test itself. So now really all I do, if I have a soil probe, I'm just going to stick in the ground. Go about four inches deep. If you want to go six, but no more than six, because at the end of the day, that's really the root zone of what you're dealing with. So we're going to pull it out. The nice thing about soil probe, uh, there's several things you can do with them. Uh, you can see your thatch layer a bit, takes a good, nice soil sample in the middle of the slope and then three at the upper slope. And that should give me a pretty good representative sample. Okay, so now I got my sample in my stainless steel dog bowl. Can be plastic too or whatever. Can leave a little bit of the organic matter in there. Showed you on a slope. And the reason why I showed you on a slope is in case you want to go in the, the lower, the middle, and the upper. If you're doing your home lawn, generally would take like three samples in the front, three samples in the back, and maybe two samples on the sides. You're going to need a bag and a pen. Take the stainless steel mixing here. You can't use galvanized. Some of your micronutrients are going to be thrown off by the galvanization. Just try to work it together where you're getting a uniform sample. That is a typical sandwich bag. About half full is going to be just fine. Let's fill out the piece of paper that they are going to need in order to process your sample. Okay, here's your soil sample form. Most of the stuff, name, address, sample ID. Pick something. You can pick a number. You can pick your kid's name. It really doesn't matter. Now, you will need to put your sample ID. This is what the permanent marker is for on this bag. And you also probably want to go ahead and put your name, the sample ID, your home address. You can put that on there too. Reason being is your sample can get separated from that form in the lab. And then that way, if it does, they know it's your sample. Previous managed turf grass, unless it's a brand new crop cover, it's just going to be turf grass. Size of sample area, you're going to do thousand square feet. Predominant soil series. Don't worry about that. You will see that. That's getting into soil science and series and that's oftentimes local nomenclature and just put unknown. Crop code. They will provide you, or it will be online, this long list of all these crop codes. Here's grass seeding, then if you have just an established yard, you just find established lawns and turf right here, put that in the code and you're good to go. Like azaleas and rhododendrons, here's a good one. They're going to give a recommendation. They give it based on that crop. Azaleas and rhododendrons generally like an acidic soil, lime to put on it, for example. So that's why this is important. Date sampled, that's good. Also put the date on this bag. Soil texture code, here's what I recommend. If it is a very fine soil, I would put clay. It's in between a gritty soil, which would be a sand, than a sandy loam. Kind of a combination between the two. Put, you know, in clay loam or silty clay loam, something like that. Don't sweat this that much, I'll show you. As you kind of squish the soil and you feel, you know, the grit to it and how clay it is and farther fine materials. This is probably a a, a silty, this is probably a silty clay loam right here. A tillage code, this is no-till. You know, sample lime in the last 12 months, that is pretty important. So they know in case you limed it, that yes, so they know. It takes six months for lime to really make, take effect. Crop share participant, no. Organic matter, now this is generally on, in this lab, the organic matter is, is charging you per sample. Don't sweat that either. It is what it is. To get the organic matter percentage up in your yard is going to take, and I know a lot of people add organic matter to the soil. It's not anything bad about it. It's just in order to get the percentage percentage up on organic matter takes a lot. So it just is what it is. Current conductivity, nutrient package that lets you know about your micronutrients. Micronutrients, particularly iron. This is made to be a huge big deal on a lot of YouTube and a lot of marketing that goes to you. There is not a golf course superintendent on planet earth that is up late at night tossing and turning, worrying about the micronutrients in their soil. Yes, if you're low, add a little. But when you add it needs to be properly chelated. The biggest one is iron. Iron has to be properly chelated in order for it to be available to the plant. There are several products, and I go over them in that iron video, that are on the market that flat out are not available to the plant and do not make any difference when you apply them. Uh, so do be aware of that. Uh, you check out my iron video. That's the big one. I will have 
a few micronutrient packages, particularly in foliar. And usually micronutrients are best to put on in a foliar application that are properly chelated that are actually plant available. If you're really dialing in your yard, slab will charge you. Comments that you may have. So let's say fertilize with one pound of 10, 10, 10 on July 12th. And then that way they kind of know that that's in their work. That's basically how you fill out a form. Let's go over a sample result. Typical soil test result you get here. WVU actually does a pretty good job. And I think these labs are getting a little bit further away from the really technical looking bulk results. I'm telling you what you're looking for here. pH 4.9. That is really, really low. Phosphorus on this soil sample was low. I generally keep phosphorus in the low to medium low range. Potassium, that one's the most relevant one in a soil test. And the reason being is, is potassium is fully immobile in soils. If you had low potassium, so pro tip here, we are essentially amending the soil. We're amending the soil if we're adjusting the pH. If it's too high, we're going to put sulfur out. If it's too low, we're going to put lime out. Best time to do that is when you aerate the soil. Actually, you're going to go in, you take a core out, and aerate it out. You can actually spike it a little bit, but you really want to take the core out. And then when you get, after you've poured it, you get a good watering and it may wash some of that sulfur or that lime and that potassium and you get it down in that root profile. Farmers go out and if they are, have a situation like this, they will actually till it in the soil, which makes total sense because potassium doesn't move and that lime and or sulfur needs to get in that soil in order for all that chemistry to work. Real quick, lime is a chemical reaction. Other than when it's frozen, that still is working for you. That's why I tell a lot of cool season folks, the best time of year, the most critical time of year to do a soil sample is in the fall. But you warm season guys or anybody really who has alkaline soils, we're talking higher than the pH of 8, you guys will have to put sulfur down. That is a biological reaction. You're putting the sulfur out on your soil or in your soil. The microbes have to chew on that and it creates sulfuric acid, and that's what brings your pH down. So really, sure, you can put it out in November, <laughs> but it's really not going to do you any good until probably April. And then it's all that bio biology is going to take place during the summer and during the warmer month. It takes you guys generally longer to lower your pH than it does, or yeah, lower your pH than it does for us in the East to raise our pH. So if you can aerate when you do this, that is the best time to do it because that's what I used to do with my golf greens. I used to go out, aerate, I put an organic fertilizer on. The only reason why I did an organic fertilizer is because I was dragging everything in. It's not so much critical for you guys because you're not dragging things in. It's not going to help you dragging things in, even if you're mowing at an inch, some of you Bermuda grass guys are. So any aerate, then put your amendment out. Ideally, if you can't, just get it out in the soil. Let Mother Nature do the rest. pH 4.9, our calcium low, our magnesium is high. So we're going to be using a, calc a calcitic limestone because we magnesium was low. We would use a dolomitic limestone. pH adjustment video. This is light. And I've actually talked to WVU Labs about this. And you can call these folks just to make sure. If this is below 5.9 and you are getting a recommendation of two tons of the acre, call the lab and have them calculate again how much lime you actually need. They kind of burp out this two tons of the acre, but all labs do it. It's not unique to WVU. I, two tons of the acre, said this in the pH adjustment video. What you will need to do is you will need to take your bag of lime and you will look at the back and you will see the amount of calcium equivalent on percentage basis that is in that bag. So what you would need to do, you would need to take that number, subtract it from uh, 100. So it was 85 calcium equivalent minus 100 is 15 and you'll take 1.1. 1, 5. That's where the 15 goes. You put 1.15 and you multiply it by the recommendation here. So actually this is to using that bag of lime, you would need 2.3 tons to the acre because this is 100% calcium equivalent. Okay. So that's what they're saying here on the limestone. So limestones do vary as far as their calcium equivalent. And they make a recommendation here of the phosphorus, which two things to do. One, if you fill out thousand square feet on that, they will likely give you a recommendation back of, of pounds per thousand square feet. If they do not, <laughs> here's what you do. You take 43.5. Okay. So if they give you two tons of the acre, you're going to divide that two tons, 2,000 by 43.5. That's how many pounds per thousand square feet you will need. And then all you got to do is multiply the total amount square footage of you, what you have and that'll give you the total amount you'll need. Go to your store, get that amount of pounds, and come put it evenly on your yard. What I recommend, don't get the dust <laughs> or the hydrated lime, the fine stuff. More will end up on your neighbor's yard or in your lungs than it will be anything else. Get the pelletized lime. Now, I mentioned dolomitic. Dolomitic limestone is needed if you have a magnesium deficiency. 
Okay, if you don't, just go with the calcium. There's usually not that much difference in the price. I also recommend just going to your local ag store, grabbing it there. It's nothing fancy about lime. There really isn't. Also, I see all these quick limes, and they say this is a quick acting lime or whatever at the hardware store. It doesn't make any damn difference. It really doesn't. Okay, if I've been a little grumpy in this video, I am getting a little tired of some of the marketing. I do research part of my videos, and I'm looking at products and things, and and the marketing kind is getting to me. <laughs> How much? There's not that much BS out there, but there's enough that it's you need to be aware of it. And that's the goal of my channel is to help you reach your goals and try to cut through the BS. So anyway, you want to check out my Amazon storefront. Those are things that I think will work well. And, and you know, I, I'm not falling for the marketing stuff. I've been doing this for 35 years and been at it for too long. So anyway, hope this helps. I'm agronomist Greg Phillips. And look, in, a pH is the engine that drives your soil. Thanks for watching. Give a like and subscribe. I try to keep my videos topical. So I, when I release a video, if you hit the notification bell, you'll get a notification. I got a video up and it might give you a heads up something you should need to be doing. Herbicides, fungicides, what have you. Anyway, thanks for watching.